Hi, I'm Brandon Wainick. Today I'm going to talk to you about the benefits of endogenous opioids through exercise. When you think for reasons people start to work out, some that come to mind include improving physical image, health, self-esteem, athletic ability, or a variety of other reasons. Many people who exercise regularly, though, will tell you that they are in a better mood after they work out. You, all, you probably hear this from coaches and friends described by as endorphins. Really, it's a series of psychological, physiological changes including neurotransmitters such as serotonin. However, I will be focusing mainly on endorphins, which are a type of endogenous opioid, along with dynorphin and enkephalon, which I will also briefly introduce. First of all, what are endo endogenous opioids? Endogenous means produced inside the body, and an opioid is defined as any substance that produces the same effect as opiates, pain relief, sedation, euphoria, and respir respiratory depression. Dynorphin and enkephalon are both found throughout the central nervous system and in the spinal cord. So far, they haven't been found to have any impact on mood or cognitive status, but they do perform a variety of other functions uh, that I will cover. Beta endorphins, on the other hand, also have the highest affinity for mu receptors, which have been linked to the generation of euphoria. Until recent years, and often still today, because of the costs, most tests are done by measuring endorphin levels in peripheral blood. However, this causes many people to doubt the relationship between mood improvements and peripheral endorphin levels because of the marginal permeability of the blood-brain barrier. Peripheral plasma endorphin levels Levels, however, have been shown to rise up to five times that of resting levels after strenuous exercise. Therefore, even with only the slim margin of permeability, they can still have a very profound effect on mood. Naloxone is an unspecific receptor antagonist. What that means is that it will block all three types of the opioid receptors, mu, delta, and kappa, so that the opioid is still produced. It cannot, so that the opioid is still produced, but it cannot do its job. Studies have shown that the use of naloxone has caused reversibility of the exercise-induced mood changes and pain, pers ah, pain perception, indicating that opioids are the cause of these effects. Which brings me to my thesis. Physiological hormone-driven responses to exercise, opioids, opioids in particular, can improve mood and prepare for the body to better cope with pre-existing and future mental and physical stressors. How and why are they produced? Opioids are re opioid release stimulated by long-term aerobic exercise that's greater than one hour usually, with increases being exponential thereafter. Opioid release can also be caused by acidosis. Acidosis, acidosis is generally caused by intense bouts of anaerobic exercise. This finding has been backed by research showing that when you prevent acidosis through buffering, it largely presents, prevents the increase in, in blood endorphin letter, beta endorphin levels. An often overlooked benefit of opioids is to relieve breathlessness, beyond the capability of just the sympathetic nervous system. Dyspnea, or breathlessness, is the most common symptom in people with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Morphine, an exogenous opioid, is often used to treat breathlessness, so this, so this inspired research to test the effects of endogenous opioids on breathing depression. This theory was tested and supported by evidence on patients with asthma. Significantly higher ratings of breathlessness were reported by the naloxone group, even though VO2 did not represent this. This is due to the pain-blocking powers of opioids, which is another physical benefit. Evidence of this was shown in another study where patients underwent 20 minutes of arm or leg exercise or 30 minutes of transcutaneous nerve stimulation. Both have been shown to stimulate beta endorphin release. Patients were then decided into two groups, either receiving naloxone injections or saline, which is a placebo. Both exercise and nerve stimulation increased their pain threshold beyond that of the subjects using naloxone, with exercise promoting the biggest increase in pain tolerance. The threshold was shown to be increased 30% compared to the control group. Immune function is a, one of the benefits that doesn't actually correlate with helping the body deal with the physical stressors of exercise. Exercise has been shown to boost natural killer cell and interferon activity, whereas immune functions take whereas other immune functions take longer to react. Natural killer cells have the ability to recognize stress cells with the absence of antibodies, allowing for a quicker response. So therefore, by promoting this, 
then you can respond quicker to infections. The mental benefits that come from opioids are even, some would say, larger and better. Opioid antagonists such as naloxone has been shown to increase the cardiovascular response to both physical and mental stressors, indicating a crucial role for opioids in handling high stress conditions. With this information, we can infer that exercise induced effects of endogenous opioids can not only be used to alleviate physical stress symptoms, but also mental stress. This is a great benefit we need to utilize because where clinical psychology only aims to help previous traumatic events, exercise can provide a better way to deal with future stressors that are yet to come. In a recent study, they used 10 trained endurance athletes as subjects. Each athlete performed a two-hour run at an individual pace. The subjects underwent positive emission tomography, also known as ligand activation. This is a method where receptor activity is measured instead of measuring endorphin levels through blood. The test showed high opioid receptor activity in the frontolimbic circuits of the brain, which are known to key, play a key role in emotional processing. Although mood scales were compared at rest and post-exercise, there were significant findings of improved mood state. Next, I'll start to talk about the use of exercise as an antidepressant now. This is important for... Anaerobic exercise may be equally effective in reducing depressive symptoms compared to aerobic exercise. This is important for two reasons. First off, it isn't practical to think that everybody will have the motivation, especially depressed patients, to begin an aerobic training regimen. So the ability to receive similar benefits through resistance training provides a much higher likelihood of pursuing an exercise program. This also shows that these benefits are taking place even before physical or aesthetic improvements indicating that increased self-efficacy isn't a cause for the improved mood and reduction of depressive symptoms. In another large-scale study, everybody prior to the testing met criteria for major depressive disorder, MDD, which is a score greater than, day, than 8 on the HAMD test, which is a common test to measure depression. And then after the post-test, HAMD scores of less than 8 were considered to be to meet the goal of remission. Remission rates are shown here with the placebo group being 31%, supervised group exercise 45%, home-based exercise 40%, and medication sertraline, which is like a Zoloft equivalent, uh, is 47%. A home-based, as you can see, the home-based exercise group was created separate than the supervised extra group exercise group to eliminate any added social benefits of participating in an exercise program. These findings show that exercise by itself is nearly as effective in treating depressive symptoms as prescription medication. This isn't to take away from prescription medication or its effectiveness, but to, provi but to provide complementary help to medicine. Even with recent research showing its effectiveness, exercise remains underprescribed, although it's a cheaper, healthy alternative with no side effects. Which brings me to my conclusion. Opioids produced inside our body allow us to cope with physical changes during exercise and provide a number of other cognitive and psych psychological benefits that are still being explored with advances in information and te technology. And these are my references. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in class or via email at brandon.l.wainick at wmich.edu. Thank you.